everybody's mind is like a fingerprint. You know, everybody don't have the same fingerprint. You know, your mind thinks differently. You're a victim of your circumstances. So if you're around this kind of arena, mm -hmm. this is what you gonna become. You done heard the thing that the game don't change, but people do? Yes. Yeah. So hear what I say, for it is the truth you see. There can only be one, the original. OG, two letters that define respect. Welcome to the original OGs. I created the original OGs to document the forgotten parts of American history. I want to recognize and give a voice to the men and women that have climbed to the top of their game. Believe me, the men and women that sit in front of this marquee have been authenticated as original OGs. My name is Mr. Rick. Welcome to my world. A world of the originals, the unique. Welcome to the original. OGs. Welcome to the original OG podcast, and I'm your host, Mr. Rick. Today we have with us the one and only Grandmaster. Brother, it is my pleasure to have you here. Ain't no doubt. Glad to be here. The real deal. Ain't no doubt. How you feeling today? I feel great. Good. Where you from? Where did your parents come from? I was originally born and raised in Fresno, California, to around 85, 1985. My parents, my mother was raised up in Mississippi, and my father was, uh, was raised up in Oklahoma. I had some stories that was told to me as time went on about the covered wagons. They took a covered wagon from Oklahoma, Mississippi, all the way to Washington. They're riding horses at the time. Yes, sir. So they went up over the hill. The horse wouldn't make it, so they had to get out and push the wagon up over the hill to go down, and they end up in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> so this was before my time. Well, like me, I got those stories from my parents in my home, and I'm sure you did too. And I'm asking the question because we have to know what the past is, where we came from, in order to understand who we are. Right. So what led them to want to come north? Before my time, I come up in poverty myself. I got a glimpse of it. But before then, those people went from one state to another state looking for work to raise their family. Now, this is before my time. So my mother and father end up leaving there coming into Fresno, California, and that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. But before I was born, they had a daughter, which was my oldest sister, and they had a son, which is my oldest brother, looked just like me, and my sister looked just like my other sister. During this time, they had outhouses in the back <laughs> where you didn't have a bathroom or toilet in the house like we have today. You had to boil the water to take a bath for the kids and the grown people. Been there, done time. that. Been there, done that, brother. So my oldest brother, they used to uh, raise the chickens so they can cook them, clean them in the tub, mm -hmm. and they take them in there for their food, you know, to feed mm -hmm. the families. But my oldest brother was two, three years old, and he fell into that water and scalded himself to death. Oh, wow. And that's how he died. Wow. My older sister, she in turn and died. So two years later, I was born and my other sister was born. So that's how that came about. That hurt my mother for uh, all the time I can remember. Mm -hmm. Because all of my family, they used to all come to my mother and father's house and she took care of the whole family. Mm -hmm. Aunties, nephews, uncles. I know that story well. And it was a gang of them there when that happened. Yeah. And she wondered why did they let her baby die like that. They came north. Were they trying to escape that situation in hopes of finding something new in the north? No. Basically, they was looking for somewhere to find some work to mm -hmm. raise their family and survive. Mm -hmm. I get it. 
Yeah, so that's what it's all about, mm-hmm. being in poverty. That was before my time, your time, mm-hmm. and everybody's time that I know. Right. Yeah. No, I get it. You know, my grandmother told me all of those stories. So, yeah. you know, after being in the North for a while, you know, and experiencing life, your upbringing in California, specifically where? Fresno, California. Fresno. So what was your upbringing like there? Well, when I was a kid, I didn't know uh, what the struggle was because I looked at my mother and father like they could rule the world. Right. Not knowing that they were struggling to take care of the family. (laughs) So as I got to be uh, four or five years old, my mother wanted me to be something, so she sent me to a a class to to, to, uh, learn how to play a violin. Wow. So uh, I got probably good at that, but I hated the fact that it was a violin. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it. Not at all. I get it. I had to go to Sunday school every Sunday, go to church every Sunday. I hated that. But all of my little young friends, I was real young, six, seven years old. Mm-hmm. All my friends there, their families there, the little bad kids in the neighborhood, that's where they went to Sunday school to try to learn something that keep everybody balanced, you know? Mm-hmm. So as time went on, I went to school. Uh, I was pretty smart in school. I used to walk to kindergarten two, three blocks away, which people don't allow their kids to do today. Mm-hmm. I used to get 50 cents to go run an errand for the lady next door. That was bad. To, to go to the store for her, you know. I walked, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. All the little things the kids do as a kid. You know, right. as time went on, I uh, started going to uh, second, third grade, you know, which I became one of the smartest kids in school, but the, the bad kids and the smart kids don't mix because they was calling them uh, mm-hmm. squares or sedity or whatever. I didn't right. want no parts of that. Right. The most rough and raw it is that's the kids I want to be around. Exactly. So, so they, had a, they had a test one day for everybody in school. Everybody failed the test but one person. It was me and a Chinese girl ballot to see who was going to win, which I didn't want everybody to see me as being sedity, so I missed the word on purpose. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be called the right. sedity, so I keep right. running with the Rough Riders, you know. <laughs> right. So that's kind of how it was with me coming up, you know. So as time went on, you know, I went on to the eighth grade. Uh, I start seeing these uh, Cadillacs ride through, you know, because all I ever knew was People come from the projects that didn't have anything. Right. You know, the kids steal and and breaking houses mm-hmm. and because they didn't have nothing to eat at home, you know, stand the projects. I had to be fortunate enough, being a couple of friends of mine that had mothers, fathers that took care of, we didn't have to go through that struggle. Right. So as time went on, I uh I kept elevating up into another situation where I'm looking out the window to these Cadillacs, which are pimps riding through in Cadillacs. I thought that's the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. What year was that? <sighs> it had to be in 1959 or 60. Oh, wow. And so let me interject this question. Now, now here we are. You, you're beginning to create some form of imagination. Right. At what point did you transition your culture into another lifestyle? I was one of them kids that never even cussed or smoked a cigarette in front of my mother and father. That's the kind of respect I had for them. So I tried to do everything to show them that they had what they intend to raise up a good kid. Mm -hmm. So... uh, Seventh, eighth grade, we started went to dr- one transition to another. We went from the gang, gangs to getting in high school to watching the players. Uh, so around 11th or 12th grade, but me keep watching these these Cadillacs and these players ride through leaning, you know, and looking good and sharp. I go down to Chinatown one night, and I see a friend of mine by the name of Milton Peters. Actually, he wasn't my friend at the time. Mm-hmm. We became friends later, but. I just wanted to see the pimps and the holes because that was exciting to me. 
What the, excited you about that? The flash. The fl- I mean, they were so sharp and hair fixed, the jewelry and the suits. You know, people weren't accustomed to that. Mm-hmm. All the people that I knew were overalls and dirty pants going to the grape fields mm-hmm. and cotton fields and, you know, stuff of that oh, nature, you know. Go that didn't, didn't move me because I never wanted that for my life. You know? Right, I get it. So uh, summertime, we had to go out, pick cotton and cut grapes. I hated that. <laughs> so... I had to find something that I could feel more comfortable with was pitching watermelons. So I had an uncle who used to go pitch watermelons, so I went out there with him because that was a man's job. Mm. So I gave that a shot. Every year, we would go out there in the summertime, so we had to buy school clothes. Mm. So uh, when I turned 16, I went out there for the last time because they worked me so hard. I went to sleep seeing watermelons coming through my head all <laughs> night long. I never went back to that cotton field. I mean, the watermelon field. Mm-hmm. So at that time, you know, I had a girlfriend that we got together, you know, a few of the guys I went to school with. This was around 11th, 12th grade. They started getting a little welfare checks for the women. That's how initially everything started. Right. So we felt like if we was getting money from a woman, we felt like we was right. uh, enhancing whatever we was. Uh, you in the game now. Yeah. So now uh, getting the feet where we was apprentices, you know, this is all we was doing, but everybody else getting theirs from the track, you know, the older guys, mm-hmm. you know. So I transitioned into uh, the guy come to me. And I used to dress real sharp as a uh, youngster, you know. Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine come to me and say, have you ever thought about being a pimp? I said, no. He say, uh, I said, why you ask me that? He said, you look like one, you dress like one, and you got a prostitute. So I looked around. I said, what you got? (laughs) (laughs) He says, you're a woman. He said, you got to get one woman to sit in your corner. And I thought about it, and I thought about it. So I went home about a week or so and started mashing, you know. So the girl said, okay, let's give it a shot. I take and sit her down. I mean, it was just a touch-and-go situation there. She wasn't no hell of a hooker or nothing, you know. Mm. But so I'm riding down the street, and uh, this lady had come up, put the lights on, start uh, flagging me down. So I I, uh, stopped. It was two of them, matter of fact. They uh, said, "Can can I ride with you? I said, yeah, okay, come on. This one lady was out of Oakland, the other one was out of Fred, and I kind of went to school with her. Mm. So, uh, you know, back during this time, we had the JFK's hairstyles, you know, nothing doing nothing major when it comes to mm. the game, but, you know, we was getting our feet wet, you know. Right. A couple of friends of mine, about four of us, you know. Mm. So at this time, the girl looked upside my head and said, well, I like him. So the girl said, all you got to do is get your money again and choose it. Now, these are veteran hoes, you know. Right. But I wasn't a veteran pimp at the time. I was, <laughs> no, I was a prince, you know. <laughs> So that night, she gave me some money that night, and this was in 1964. I got the disease mm. and never could get rid of it. You just said you got the disease. Yeah. There's a lot that goes with a disease. Sure it is. So what some of those diseases or what is connected to that disease? Okay, for instance, you got a lot of young Macs that come up into the life. When we say the disease, that means they put it in their mind as pimp or die, you know. Mm -hmm. That's a disease. Right. Something that you can't hardly get rid of. Mm -hmm. And that's what they have for many, many years and a whole lot of them, you know, until they got old enough to be able to open their eyes and open their mind to take their life into a, a better place, mm-hmm. uh, elevate higher, you know. Mm-hmm. It takes time for that. It's a transition that you go through in life. I get it. You know, so I went through that for like uh, 20 years. Life, it got so good. Uh, my parents disagreed with it. My mother say, to, I went to my mother's one time, she say, Boy, what I hear about you being the biggest pimp in town. 
and I used to hide everything from mother. I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't even take my cars. I'd pull my right. Cadillac around the corner. Walk I around now. I got to hear it all the time, you know. And she said, we didn't raise you like that. Where you learn that at? Mm. So I just kind of ignored it. And I just didn't want to hear it, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm making a living now. You know, yeah. I come out of the poverty state. You done bought into it. Yeah, I'm driving new cattle. I got big jewelry. My hair fixed pretty. All the women on me, you know. So that's kind of where my life had went, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't tell me anything about nothing because I'm getting more money than the president. Exactly. So, you know, uh, this is what everybody is, is, is dreaming for, to live a nice life, you know. So, the American dream. Yeah, that's how I got caught up into it, you know. So everybody's mind is like a fingerprint. You know, everybody don't have the same fingerprint, you know. Your mind thinks differently, you know. You know, uh, water seeks its own level. You're a victim of your circumstances. So if you're around this kind of arena, mm -hmm. this is what you going to become, mm -hmm. you know, so... I advise all youngsters, you know, this is steps that you take. Life, come, life changes, you know. Mm -hmm. It don't stay the same, you know. They, you know, heard the thing that the game don't change, but people do. Yes. Yeah. So that's kind of where it be, you know. So I transitioned myself personally. Things start happening in life, you know. God carries a fool, takes care of you. But once he cut that string on and let you go, you're mm -hmm. on your own. Okay. So you're going in turn, you're going to be having go through trial and tribulations. It's a roller coaster ride when it comes to life because you're rolling the dice, you're gambling with everything that's going on out there because things don't stay the same. Exactly. You look like everything gonna be the same for the next two years, but you can bump your head the next week, <laughs> be on top of the world and look down and something happening you oh, down right. here. Yeah, yeah. So everybody don't have the strength to get back. So it's a roller coaster ride. Some go to robbing, some go to killing, some go to drugs. They don't tell them where you might go. It all depends where your strength lies on the inside. Exactly. Where are you at in your life now? Well, I transitioned after going through my downfalls. It educated me and taught me a lesson. So the older you get, the wiser you get. Hopefully. Should be anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, myself, it made me wiser. Yes. I seen, <laughs> opened up and seen where life was going with me, somewhere I didn't want it to go. Mm -hmm. I fell down, tried again. Fell down, tried again. Fell down, tried again. Now, I done snap. I got, if I want something different to happen, I got to do something different. Exactly. So, I took, my life, I elevated, and I started doing constructive things in my life. I started writing books. Wow. I started putting movies together. Wow. I got four or five movies together. One is called My Life Over the Top. Wow. Uh, the other one's called A Familiar Lie. I produced a movie called uh, Baby in the Hood. Wow. I got another movie that's coming out now called Panache. I have another movie that they, it's in production right now in my life. So I learned to have patience, something I never had before. Mm, I get you it. Know, I used to be a speeder. <laughs> I get yeah. it. I ain't got time to wait. Y'all wait. I ain't got time. Yeah, I'm gone. So now uh, I don't do anything. I'm a retired man because I'm able to lose myself and find myself. Mm -hmm. So once I find myself, no looking back. It used to be a time that I pull up at the, at the, uh, a restaurant, eat police company, I got to go. Right. I think they're all looking at me. Because I'm out of line. <laughs> you know? Hey, stay yeah, you. but I don't have to do that no more. Right. I, my kid's mother had a wreck. I felt so good because at one time I had 20 cars, five houses, closet full of mink coats, long, short, every kind you name, million dollar one for jury, prettiest houses, Mansions, everything. They knocked me down and took it all. Mm. And I was almost 50 years old when it happened. And I started, got into life when I was like 63, I mean, in 1963. Mm -hmm. So I had a long, successful run. I had enough to, for the rest of my life, I didn't have to worry about nothing. I used to count money all night, three or four o'clock in the morning, take it and put it up. 
So you never know what direction life might take you, what journey it might take you on. Mm -hmm. You never know the reason why. Exactly. To me, it educated me. So, Good point. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but you don't know where life is going to lead you yeah. at a certain point. Um, I, we never really know until the end of it, and that's well, where you were supposed to be. Once you get your final destination, you can look back on your past right. and direct your future. Exactly. Yeah. So and get on a positive note. For now. I'm saying that to ask you where, where you are right now. Where do, how do you feel? Where do you feel? What do you feel as far as your journey and where life wanted you to be? Well, i tell you this. I've been the biggest fool a person could ever be. The world looked at me like I was a king. But to myself, I knew I was a damn fool. Mm. Because what I thought it was, it wasn't. Mm. I'm, bound, I'm blind. Because glamour blinds you. Bright lights in Vegas blinds you. Mm. You know, I used to when you send my game to Vegas because they get to look at them bright lights. They just get to be <laughs> okay. They gonna be too much looking at the pretty lights. <laughs> and he took care of no yeah, business. So I sit up where it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, uh, you know, I teach all kids now. I don't glamorize fast lane. I don't glamorize what they call negativity because there's too many ways for you to win the right way and don't have nothing to happen to you exactly. unless you don't take care of yourself and, and die from natural causes exactly. or, do, or something stupid, you know. You know, you're a very successful person today. And um, some of the things that you're able to do today business-wise and community-wise, how you help the community I know that today, the space that you're in, you're, you're in control of your space and you choose to help a lot of people. Yeah. The thing that I preach and I teach and I talk to everybody, I don't promote the fast lane, the gang, mm -hmm. I don't promote that. Exactly. I po promote going to school, get educated, get your credit together and Say take your again. time <laughs> and you're going to win in the long run. That's the promised land, you know. We're living for the promised land. We ain't running for no hope and guess and no theories. Okay. We want facts. Okay. You know, uh, uh, a megalodon is the biggest shark in the ocean. <laughs> you know, a shark will grow eight feet in a fish tank, but an ocean's going to grow 80 feet. Mm. So you got to elevate your mind and being on a positive note and s surround yourself around positive, positive people. Yes. Somebody can can uh that have experiences and it took the downfalls for you so you don't have to go through that that I, that that's what i, I teach hear. my kids that that's what so i, I did hear. all this here struggling and you know and you all ain't this got here. to do it yeah y'all don't have to do that there's a gorilla in the closet you don't have to go in there i'm one of the most fortunate people because my heart has always been good you know i'm one of the most fortunate people to lost go through the see Every, it's a lot of people been in life in the game that never even had a new car. Thank you. I've been riding brand new since 1963. Wow. Every year. Wow. I'm driving top of flight stuff right now after then took it all two or three times. Not, not the one or two, two or three times. Took everything, wiped me out and sent me and laid me down. Yes. That don't happen all the time. Just like people don't hit the lottery and win all the time. Hey, man. So That ain't it, easy to do. Yeah. No, it's not. You know, that's so not I wouldn't advise that at all. for nobody. You know exactly when they took everything from me, I started to give up myself. I looked up to the sky. I said, "Why would I give up?" Well, the sky <laughs> is the limit. The I ain't sky got there is yet. the limit. <laughs> Why would I give up right here? If this little stuff is nothing. That was just a stepping stone. Exactly. That's what gave me the strength to get back. Me and God had a talk, and we rode it out together. Hey, man, you know, there's something I've always wanted to ask you, and I feel this may be an appropriate place and you may not mind, but. Mm. This open book? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, no, I'm respectful towards you, brother. I, I right. have nothing but respect for you. Mm. But I, I, I just, I'm so inquisitive. You came up with the Ward Brothers. Yes, I did. That's mind blowing. Yeah. You know. Spit my house, left my house when he was doing the Mac, left my house two weeks and was dead. You spit in my house Frank. all the time. Frank. Yeah, just drive his car. We ride together, everything. Frank, Ted, Willie, Andrew, or 
I've been to every one of them funeral. Wow. What 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 was that like? I, I understand. I understand that circle. You know, I ain't no lame to it. I understand, but I'm talking this particular circle with the Ward brothers and all, and you being in the center of that. You know, how, what, give us a small glimpse of that. <laughs> well, all I can tell you, they was gentlemen's. They was my personal friends, and even uh, some of the Ward brothers. See, a lot of people don't know the true history of them. I know them personally. These was my friends. And uh, I know things nobody don't know. Yeah. Because used to be at my house, kicking, admired me, respected me as on a giant size level. Right. You know? And Ted Ward, you know, I hadn't seen him in 18 years. We went to his brother's funeral. And the last time I had saw him, he told me, say, man, everybody's so concerned about your business and how you do this and how you do that. I said, when they asked me, I said, what is Verge doing? He said, mind his own business and leave everybody else's alone. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> this show has the intent to define what a real OG is, what an original OG is. My partner and I have developed a method to ensure that if someone should sit in front of this OG logo, that they have been authenticated and found to be true in their history as far as what an OG is. I wanted to personally know about the Ward brothers. That was something that I learned about through the movie The Mac. Max Julian in my life had become an associate of mine. Mm -hmm. Those guys kind of dictated what happened in certain parts of the community for a long time and still to date. Right. You know, so when I found out that my friend had came up with these guys, it, it, was, it wasn't mind blowing, but man, it was so inquisitive. It was something I wanted to talk to you about so mm -hmm. bad, man, because I grew up as a kid admiring right. that situation. Right. Everybody did. And, and I know you, and I know you're at the top of your game, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, man, how long ago was this? And how did you fraternize with these people? What was that lifestyle like at that time? You know, and for you to sit here and share that, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I don't want, like yourself, people to think that we're glorifying that lifestyle. That's not what we're doing. It, it's part of our life. We've moved on. We've become other people, businessmen, et cetera, et cetera. We're here trying to help people make our community a better place, but it's just something, if you had lived at that time, you, you just can't negate it. <laughs> you just can't, can no, you, brother? No, you cannot. You know, and to see you, how old are you, brother? 76. Did you hear what he said? His brother looked like he about 60 years old or less. 76 years old. Got workout videos that'll scare you to death. Well, like I was saying before, you got to be all in the mind. A lot of people don't have the strength in their mind to keep pushing. Wealth, health is wealth. Thank you. And you have to take care of yourself. A lot of people follow trends. And like I say, they be caught up in that bubble. And they don't know how to get past it because they got more uh, sheep than they do shepherds. And all they want to do is follow, but who they follow, it's the, like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> I see so much of it, you know. I get and, it. Uh, it's the majority rules, bottom line. You could f see five people come through and got the total package on everything, but you see 30 people come through and outrule them five. <laughs> okay. You know, they're going to go with the negativity than was popular because exactly. they're not thinking themselves. Exactly. Uh, me, myself, personally, I knew what it take for longevity. Mm -hmm. I know what it take to be respected. I know what it take to be successful. I have businesses. I have uh, books, movies. Uh, I don't even know if I mentioned about my book from the inside out, 
Death is not a game. I got it from both sides, though. So you read them two books, you're going to make your mind up right then that you need to go to school and get educated and go on what I should say. <laughs> okay. Because it's all there in them two books. Hey, that's a beautiful thing, man. And uh, I don't like being on the black side, which we know black is beautiful. Yes. But we got to be realistic. We can't see in the dark. We can't do nothing. Hey. In the, see, everything we can do, we got to be in the light. In the light. We want to stay on a positive note. And you got to pattern after something that you see is positive. Most people pattern after something they see is negative. Exactly. You got people going out here shooting and killing and doing all this stuff. Man, they take people like us that can go in, which they consider us as down, you know, at the bottom, uh, don't know nothing, uh, criminals or whatever. Mm. We own this one that could step off in the White House and the mayor's play and stop a lot of this. Exactly. You know, it's just like when they hire people for drug rehabs. Who do they hire? A people that use drugs. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. These people that's never been through that can't teach nobody nothing, can't stop nothing. Yeah. We, we, we want to stop some of that. We're all the one that can stop a whole lot of stuff, but they don't want to see us do it because they see, don't want to stop. The world is built on capitalism. They don't give a damn what happened. <laughs> long long they as rake the it there. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get it. So I they don't care it. about you or that person, that person. See, the world has been on war. When they send the people to war, they know millions of them going to get killed when they send them. It's they part don't of war. Care. It's the nature of war. It's not about saving lives. It's about them winning with money. It's about power. That's it. Well, yeah. you know, and that leads me into another subject. You do a, a, your birthday party every year. Right. And you're getting ready to do that again. Right. Uh, no need of us going through who may be there because right. that that could be anybody. Right. You know, it, it's a pretty fa fascinating situation. Yeah, most people that uh, all the people that know about my resume when it comes to my whole life, the real ones is dead. Wow. All the guys I come with is dead. But one person that I come up with as a kid, wow, we're the only one that's alive today. Wow. That's something else. Everybody else is dead out of all those people. And I think about them all the time. <laughs> I know you do. They were some hell of a guys. They had hell of a words. And they were some hell of a hustlers. And I must say, yeah. you're a hell of a guy. Well, I appreciate that. You no, know, well, I mean, I, it is I, what it is. Bro. Yeah, I, I was taught that as a kid. And it's, it's embedded in me. I come from a good stock. My parents raised me right. My whole surroundings was right. And that's the way I come up. Action become habits. There it is. You know, they got good habits, they got bad habits. Where do you where where is your mind today? Business wise, you know, uh something you want to accomplish at this point in your life, you know. Uh wh where are you at right now? Well, I done done a lot of things in life. I'm on straight constructive to leave a uh a legend, uh, how would you say it, uh, for my kids. A legacy. Yeah, legacy for my kids, grandkids, mm -hmm. stuff of that nature. That's what I'm focusing on now. Good. I'm on the right path uh, for something that can really come out of real successful. And that's kind of basically what I'm on. I'm kind of, uh, don't need what I used to, I, what I, 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 used to, I don't need it no more. It's really simple. Uh, it's not hard at all. Yeah, well. Just got to have a mindset for it. You know, it, it's simple when you get it. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, you, but you got to make a temp. Yeah. A lot of people don't even make a temp because it, it's the same thing we go back to. You know, you have kids raising kids. Parents think they got control over kids. It's their friends that, that does that. We would never know. Exactly. They're not going to tell us. Exactly. Th whether you know it or not, they think, we just old fools of living in the past. That's what we thought. We looked at our parents. Yeah, same thing. Hey. It's just a, it's just recycles. Yes. So I found out one thing, believe it or not, everybody respect success. Believe that. Once you get respect, then people will listen. This is what we're shooting for. We got to show something that's positive for them to pay attention to. 
I got all my kids, they respects me. Yes, sir. But I know for the definite fact, if I wasn't standing strong on my belief and my actions, my kids are hard. <laughs> they are hard to impress. You can't impress them. I impress okay. all my kids. You know what I'm saying? That's and that's appreciated. That's you know, hard to because do. Because I know I'm doing something right. That's hard to do with any children. Right. So you got to stand on something solid, some foundation to make anybody. It falls on down to the people in the streets. We can do certain things to control a lot of stuff that's going on. But you have to be somebody. Like, you got to be some type of leader that they can see something that's on a positive exactly. note. Exactly. You can't just talk. You got to walk that walk. You just can't talk. You got to walk that exactly. walk. Exactly. Yeah, the movie and, I was making called My Life Over the Top. We were shooting that in Fresno. I had the killers, the robbers, all the youngsters out there that you can't tell nothing to. Ain't going to listen to nothing. <laughs> you can look at their face and tell, I'll kill you right now if there's nobody exactly. around. Guess For what? the hell of it. Guess what? Man, I rode through there by myself and controlled 70, 80 of them by myself. And we, this is on the west side where they kill and shoot. Exactly. Man, they, they, they were so respectful to me, man, and listen to everything I said and come to me and ask some questions. So this is what it takes to, to control the, the cities and stuff, you know. It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. People in the, in the mayors and all, they can't do it. Why would, we, why would our children listen to them? They're not going to do it. They feel like. But they the one think they can do it. Yeah, I know they do, but the children feel like you're the reason I'm in the condition I'm in. Me or you, uh, uh, three, four of us can go down and, and control way more than they can. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I rode down and had a brand new Rolls Royce parked out front. I'm jury all up. I got all my jury on. Mm -hmm. Me and I with jury standing out there. I'm front, right on the west side. Guess what? Police seen all them people out there and didn't do nothing. They respected it. You know what I'm saying? They recognized it. Yeah, they respected it. And that's what original OGs well, do. This is what we do. So, again, you know, it, it has been my pleasure and my honor right. for the listening audience. This is the one and only Grand Master. The wisdom that he's given us on this show is not something that he just give up easily. And you will see him on the original OG's council. Stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Join the movement. And I guarantee you, you will take away things from us that would help you enhance your life and become a better person. Thank you. We have created this show so that men and women alike can come forward and tell their truth. If you have people that you believe to be an OG, go into the comment section, write us, let us know where to find the history so that we can authenticate it, bring them on the show, tell their story so that we can add to the American history. That's it, that's all. The original OG.